So, vehicle to grid. We're not just talking vehicle to grid, but it's really about the integration, I suppose, of the electric car into, in more ways into the home. Here's, I'm going to start with one very important question because that's the one I get asked a lot. And from what I know of the research, if you plug your car into your house and it's running your house and charging the car and running your house and charging the car, it's going to wear the battery out in 35 minutes. But I believe that's not the case from the research that's come in. It, 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 it's actually advantageous to the car to do this. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I guess what's really uh, I should start with, um, from a vehicle to grid technology point of view, um, from Nissan's point of view, we're actually here and we're doing it now. I mean, we've been um, selected as part of uh, a, a consortium of companies to really start proof of concept trials with, um, uh, with vehicle to grid. And it really does offer the opportunity of you driving around with a mobile power pack, utilizing that to power your home, give the opportunity to, uh, let's say, give relief to the grid, so in help in terms of balancing the grid, and also taking you away from the, let's say, 100% reliability on terms of uh, drain on the grid as well with your electric vehicle. So once you reach a, sur a surplus of energy, it's now that opportunity to use technology that we're developing with our partners here, actually, um, to then sell that surplus power back into the grid as well. So right. effectively giving you free miles. Yeah, yeah. So that's because that's where it gets really interesting is the, is the, the potential deals that you can do with your electricity supplier. Of, you know, you become an energy provider effectively. Tom, I mean, this is, I know, the, the area that you're working in. Yeah, so it is incredibly exciting. If you think of what potential electric vehicles, when there are hundreds of thousands of them, millions of them on the grid, offer to help to support the grid as we deploy more and more renewables and to green up the grid, it's an incredibly important opportunity for us to use. We, we could spend a lot of money building massive batteries or hydro plants, or we could just use the electric vehicles that will be there anyway. And then by using those electric vehicles to provide energy um, to the grid, the people who own those electric vehicles actually can make money out of those cars and they're not just sitting you know, useless for 95% of the time. Because, I mean, there, is a, there was a story, I think, last year of, a, a, I believe, a Dutch company that had a load of delivery vans that were plugged in and they had vehicle-to-grid systems and it, in, they, they, they actually made money. From, they, they, they actually ended up with a, a, a surplus of cash from charging their cars. Yeah, absolutely. The, the opportunities for scalability for vehicle-to-grid are evident. And uh, in the two projects that we have, obviously, with OVO, we're working on residential opportunities but we have another work stream which is going for fleets as well. So, yes, yeah, so when you scale up from that perspective, it's not one car, one charger. It could be 10 vehicles, one charger. And that time connected to the, to the charger gives you the opportunity to aggregate that power and then sell that back to the, to the grid itself. Right. So, and, and Mike, what, I mean, what, what's, what's Indra's role in this? Where, where, where do you see this going? Sure. So we're the technology partner actually developing the... Um, the charging station itself, so bi-directional charging station with a Chadamo vehicle connection, um, world's first in the domestic setting as far as we're aware, so a uh, six kilowatt bi-directional charger um, that you plug your car into, sits on the driveway. So yeah, because we were talking about this yesterday about what all the terms mean, so six kilowatts is essentially enough to run most of the stuff in most houses. I mean, you probably could, if you put the tumble dryer, the kettle, the washing machine on at once, it's going to be more, but basically for 90% of the time, that is an ample supply to run your house, isn't it? I mean, yeah, so uh, in terms of the complementing the ecosystem, I mean, with Nissan, we've been looking at solar, uh, solar power generation, storage through Second Life, leaf batteries, so um, utilising uh, those battery packs which have been recycled from other markets where they have far more stringent uh, end-of-life protocols. So Japan, for example, five or six years, they'll break the cars down. Those battery packs are coming back to us and putting them within the, uh, the X storage unit itself. So... Uh, we've done a little bit of research on, on what, is actually what is actually required on a day-to-day -day basis and about four kilowatts of power will do your, your three-bedroom house typically. Yeah. So you'll see those come to life through X storage units, but with the, with the six kilowatt charger itself, it will, it will help it to, with vehicle to grid from that perspective. Right. Yeah, the only enough. real enemy single kind of item in the house you need to be aware of is the power shower. Right. Uh, that might be a bit of a struggle. I don't have a power shower. No, I just got a, my shower just dribbles. It's fine. <laughs> so the, the, I think the worry that some people will have who maybe bought a, a new electric car is, is this going to wear the car out? Is it going to damage it? Is it going to shorten its battery life? 
Well, like, no, I mean, this is part of the, the proof of concept, but in, even in our early, early, early assessments of the situation, as, as you uh, pointed out earlier, that when we cycle the batteries in a, in a controlled manner like this, it can actually help reinforce the, the durability of the battery right. and the longevity of it. And there's a number of profiles that we're, we'll, we'll be looking at as we, as we roll out the, the program here. I mean, it's fair to say, so the missing piece that we haven't talked about yet is the kind of intelligence layer, the platform that manages all the different chargers um, and interacts between the electric cars, the chargers, and the, the energy system. So that's the national grid and the local network. And OVO uh, developed a technology called V-Charge, which will be controlling the vehicle-to-grid units, as well as stationary storage batteries and smart chargers. Um, and also electric storage heaters. And it's just fair to say that a lot of the conversations that we're having with Nissan at the moment are exactly what are we allowed to do with the battery to keep it within warranty. I mean, the, the, the promise to the, anyone who owns a Nissan Leaf and participates in this trial is don't worry about it, your warranty will be fine. But obviously behind the scenes, there's a, a lot of work that goes on to make sure that is the case. And yeah. we set clear parameters to make sure that happens. Yeah, that was Jeff. That was a jab, wasn't it? <laughs> it was very gentle and polite. No, no, it didn't, wasn't meant to be a jab. <laughs> <laughs> but then in terms of uh, the economic benefit to the homeowner that has got maybe, let's say, yeah, let's say has got solar vehicle-to-grid system, you know, how, have you got, kind of done analysis of the benefits that would accrue to them and also time of use, you know, and multiple tariffs and all that stuff? So, yeah, obviously that's the kind of the main focus of OVO Energy. You know, how do we, how do we give, how do we essentially make enough money from this technology to pay for the capital cost of it and to share some of the benefits with the people who are participating, whether right. that's predominantly the customers, which is what we particularly care about, but obviously our partners like um, Nissan as well. And... Um, at this event, a lot of people have been talking to us about how do they consume their solar, use it to charge their car, and, um, and surely that's the best way of doing it. But actually, it's incredibly complicated working out how do you unlock the value from um, you know, trading use of systems charges, which are very complex, the way that energy company bills are broken down. And the way that most of the value is going to be released to the customer is by saying, avoiding charges at certain times of day and then passing that back. We essentially have two products that we're, we'll be offering to people. One is you just export as much as you can to the grid um, and you will pay for every unit you export to the grid and uh, you'll be able to earn enough to power your car for a year for free, assuming you plug it in enough times and you set your parameters uh, correctly. Alternatively, if you have solar and you want to use your solar, then probably we'll, we'll have a sort of matching tariff for that and right. people will be able to choose which one they want to do. Because that is a really interesting change because in a sense in my house now I have solar and a battery and my whole aim is to, re is to release the minimum amount into the grid because I want to use it myself, you know, and, that, and that's quite an interesting, because I, you know, I don't have the feed-in tariff because I didn't want to have a feed-in tariff, so I I have to get as much benefit as I can out of the system that I have in the house, you know, so I'm charging two cars and running the house as best I can. But if there was an encouragement for me to effectively sell electricity into the grid, that would change that dramatically. I mean, that makes the feed-in tariff, forget it, who's interested, you know, there's a, 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 it sounds like a different idea than a feed-in tariff. It, it, is, it is different in, in some... I won't go into the technical detail, but, yeah, it's just, it is yeah. quite different. It's worth everyone, you know, worth everyone knowing. It's pretty early days in all of this technology, yeah. in vehicle-to-grid technology, but even in smart charging technology. Uh, you know, we talk a lot... Of, everyone's very excited about time-of-use tariffs and flexible charging. And, and actually, in terms of really unlocking the value, in really kind of releasing money from all this stuff... It's, it's really early, um, and it's not quite as simple as it might seem. So often the best thing is to just do it as simply as possible. So get on an E7 and charge during E7 hours might be best. You, it can even that can be complicated because you need to work out how much energy do I use in peak time in my household, not my electric car. And you've got to think about it in, in, in the round in order to work out what the best deal is. I, I, mean, I suppose I'm fascinated by the, the, the long-term kind of... A wider impact, so not just on one house, but 
you know, the theories behind if there are, I don't know, let's say, let's go with a million cars that are connected V to G. I mean, maybe you, you can answer this. That, you know, how, what, what potential impact that could have on our generating capacity on the grid, on how we operate in, on a day-to-day -day basis. The first thing is, as a lot of people will have read in the newspapers, that we need to not crash the grid. That's like yeah. the, 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 the kind of what everyone's most worried about is, is not what can it give, but what can it not take. And so that's the smart charging challenge of shifting the, 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 the charging away from peak time so you don't overload the grid. Um, in terms of capacity, I mean, just, you, you know, we're talking many, many Hinkley Point Cs just from a few million electric vehicles. I mean, each electric vehicle at seven kilowatts, if you've got seven million of those, that's seven gigawatts of power, right. that's three and a half nuclear power stations. It's just a million electric cars. There are 30 million vehicles on the road in the UK. It's, the potential is absolutely enormous. And, and as I said before, you've already, people have already paid for that battery. They've already paid for that car. Most of the time, it just sits there doing nothing. As a, as a society, as, a, as an infrastructure, we can be making a lot more of that. And that, yeah. you know, for, not for free, but as an added value. Yeah, because that's out of all the statistics I've ever heard in the motoring industry, in the automotive industry at all, and there's many variants of all of them. The one that everyone seems to agree on is the 9090, which is 90% of cars are not in use 90% of the time. And no one's ever said, well, actually, it's about 86. <laughs> but they all go, yeah, it's about 90%. Which is an extraordinary thing when, you, when you're first think, considering electric cars and you're going, oh, well, how long does it take to charge? Because you're thinking in terms of filling with petrol, where you have to stand there holding something. And it is that thing where you're not going to wait. <laughs> I don't stand by the car holding the lead, even though every newspaper photographer wants you to stand by a car holding the lead like you would do that. Like, I don't ever do that. I put it in and I walk away, you know. But that... Uh, you know, the potential uh, is obviously enormous there, that, that, that you're not going to be charging 30 million cars starting at the same time. If you are, then yes, we would melt our grid and France's and Denmark's. <laughs> well, yeah, and we, we've seen with legislation and the governments in various, uh, in various countries, uh, England, Scotland, for example, over the next 2020, 2025, 2030, all of these policies that come into place are driving everybody into electric vehicles or other alternative fuel vehicles. And that provides us with a mobile power grid, in, in yeah. essence. So if we're smart about it, and the work that we're doing right now will help us to not load the grid, as Tom had mentioned previously, but to support the grid and give us that actually um, couple that with sustainable, renewable energy generation, either it, whether it's from the grid itself or personal uh, grids, microgrids right. from that perspective. Uh, it makes for a cleaner air future, for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike, I was just wondering, you know, is, there, is it the same case as in with many other, particularly electronics technologies, that the cost of the units, you know, which I imagine is, is high-ish at the moment, is that likely to come down with mass production and all those, all the normal, I mean, is it going to get simpler and easier to make? Right? Sure. So we're using uh, latest and greatest in uh, power electronics semiconductor technology. Um, the price of that at the moment is really high. Um, it's due to fall massively over the next few years, so that suddenly the cost of these charges comes down, um, and that makes it more viable, the business proposition becomes more effective. This gentleman here in the red T-shirt. When will um, VT, uh, V2G become available so I can use it with my car now? If you have a Nissan Leaf, have you signed up to the program? Um, we hope to install our first unit in August, um, and then they'll start to be rolled out from September onwards. That's a, that's a good point. Sorry, Robert, if I may. So uh, in order to enroll for the, uh, the trial, obviously visit the OVO stand and visit the OVO website, and we're, we're looking for active LEAF uh, participants from that perspective. And it can, just to clarify, can this be, is this any Nissan LEAF or is this relative, which, from which year? Any Nissan LEAF. Any Nissan any LEAF. After 2013. EMV Sorry, and EMV 200 from And EMV 200, yeah. After yeah. 2013. Hi there, uh, just a quick one. How do you feel about, we're talking about range anxiety, if people are going to use the batteries on their cars and they buy the electricity or they get the electricity at one rate and a lower rate and then they use, they give that back, what happens then in terms of if they're going to then take the electricity at a higher rate and how do we get over that, that, that anxiety? That shouldn't happen. Uh, the whole point of this is that that wouldn't happen. Uh, come, if you come to the stand, there's a, there's a nice instructional video of how the system is managed and how the users have an app to set their minimum state of charge. So, for example, if they wanted X number of miles or X percent of charge, they can make sure they don't go too low. But the, the system is controlled to basically make it work. If it doesn't make financial sense 
for the customer. It, we won't discharge, we won't charge. So vCharge is complicated to go into in, in, in too much um, detail, but basically it maps out the pathway for an electric vehicle to charge over the time it has but by when the customer wants to drive, the driver wants to drive it again. And it says, okay, I've got X number of hours, I've got this pr these prices of energy coming, I'm gonna charge it at this t time to keep the price to a minimum and discharge it at this time to make the most money from it. So for those with um, solar PV, um, can the system work out of the Zappi and trickle charge the car from PV or is that not the design? And also, can it work with CCS in the foreseeable future? As I said before, it's very early and what kind of works and what people benefit from, what we think will work, so what makes more money or maybe people have different reasons for charging in a different way is something we'll be working out over time. Yeah. So CCS in its current form does not support uh, vehicle to grid. So when that's uh, enabled in the standard, we will certainly uh, jump on that and uh, work towards that. It is in the very much in the plan, and as soon as it can be done, we will be doing it. So in the manual for my i3, it tells me that if I'm leaving it for a long period, um, like I'm going away for two weeks, I should leave it not fully charged, and I should you know, let it run down a bit. And so if, if it's at Heathrow sitting there, you know, I'd like to have it fully charged for the journey home. And I, wonder, I, like, I love this idea of a Heathrow car park where we all come and park our cars, and we get parking for free by allowing Heathrow to use our batteries for two weeks. And, uh, is, do you think that would work as a business model, the idea that you're kind of loaning your battery to somebody else who runs a big V2G battery uh, while you're away, or would customers not accept that? I mean, using electric vehicles as a large battery aggregated is exactly what the business model is. Um, the airport-specific application is being investigated by people, and some think it's a really good one, and I think we'll find out next couple of years exactly how good it is versus domestic versus so yeah i mean yeah people share your your sense but at the moment though the only vehicle you can use this technology on is the nissan leaf that's it. so the, the other one other and the nv200 but so other manufacturers haven't quite jumped on this concept no. yet well essentially it's driven by the um 50 uh, kilowatt chatamo right. connector yep. yes yep. right yeah the nissan is absolutely led the way in this for, for yeah. a long time. It's miles and miles ahead of others. Right. Good on Nissan, I say. Yeah. And get on board everyone else. <laughs> sort out your CCS chargers. I think that is all we've got time for because we've got another talk coming up soon-ish. I think that was a fascinating uh, insight into the, the uh, potential future for electric vehicles. Could you please give Robert, the panel a really big can I just say one oh, oh, hang on. Wait, wait. Can I, can I just say one thing? Just draw attention to the fact that this is technology, the hardware and, and in the platform has been designed and developed here in the UK by um, Vcharge and Indra, and, which is not so far away from here and is an exciting example of local industry and um, expertise being developed. And is, the, is it being manufactured in this country? That's the, that's yeah, manufactured in Great Malvern. Great Malvern. Great Malvern's the, really the centre of the universe as far as I'm concerned. It's fantastic. Thank you very much. Please give a big round of applause to the team. Thank you.